Hello and welcome. This is Michael Beach, and you are dialed into the What Are You Doing podcast. This is the show for thought leaders who are investing in the next generation of leadership for their organization. This is also the show for emerging leaders who want to become that next generation of great leaders. By working together, we can all develop leaders who will develop more leaders and will make a difference in this economy and will make a difference in this world. All of us at Michael Beach Coaching and Consulting are excited to be able to bring you another podcast episode today. We're very fortunate to be able to contribute to the success of forward-thinking, fast-growth companies around the country. We're so grateful to be able to help them to develop and cultivate great leaders at all levels of their companies because our work is so rewarding and full of meaning. We're especially excited today to have the opportunity to introduce you to today's special guest, a good friend and a truly tremendous business leader, Nick Schneider, the Chief Revenue Officer of Arctic Wolf Networks, a very rapidly growing technology company with offices in Canada, the United States, and before long, probably in Europe and Asia as well. Arctic Wolf has been an incredible success story in Minnesota with a large infusion of investment recently and astonishing rapid growth. Arctic Wolf Networks is the leader in the security operations industry, and their security operations service keeps your company in great shape with security regulations while also keeping your business and your business data safe. To put it mildly, Nick Schneider's leadership has been instrumental in growing this company to becoming a bit of a unicorn in the industry. And we're fortunate to have him here today to help us learn from his experience. Nick, it's a pleasure to have you here. Can't wait to hear what you've got in store for our listeners today. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks for the uh, invite. Sure thing, Nick. Nick, do us a favor. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and about Arctic Wolf Networks. I think you did a good job of a brief overview there, Michael. I'm Nick Schneider, Chief Revenue Officer of Arctic Wolf Networks. Prior to that, I was VP of Sales at Code42, and prior to that, a, a number of different roles at Compellent, where we work together. So that's a little bit on me. Arctic Wolf, the company, we've been around since about 2012, founded by Brian Nesmith and Kim Tremblay. Brian was the former CEO of Blue Coat Networks. And we really set out at the end of the day to, to leave organizations with a feeling that they were safe in, in today's cybersecurity landscape. That kind of started through what we called SIM as a service at one point, and then SOC as a service, and then the industry kind of termed the phrase MDR, or managed detection and response. And then subsequently, we've moved into some of the vulnerability management space or risk space. Uh, and our mission now moving forward is to deliver a security operation to, to our end users. And I think we've done a good job of setting ourselves up to be the leader in security operations And moving forward, we'll look to continue to service really all size uh, organizations, very small to to very large. You've done a phenomenal job, Nick, of putting together an unbelievable team and an unbelievable leadership team. I'm curious, at what point in your life or in your career did you become interested in leadership? I'm not sure I can point to a specific date or phase of my life, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up in sports, so, you know, it's kind of hard to be a part of a team sport or even an individual athlete in a roundabout team sport. What I mean by that is I ran track and cross country all through high school and college, and that sport is team oriented, Mm -hmm. but the execution on game day, if you will, is is really an individual sport. So, but there's leadership you know, components of even sports like that. So I I think that's where it really started for me. You know, there were components of my every day through athletics or as you watched great teams or or great individuals on teams and the way that they operated with the folks that they played with. I think just naturally it interested me in, in leadership and more importantly in getting like a group of people rallied around a common objective 
and playing a role in ensuring that they, you know, stayed aligned and gave it their all. So I think that's probably where it started. I've had the benefit through my career of, you know, being a part of great leadership teams or witnessing great leadership firsthand. Brian Bell was my, you know, kind of first boss, I guess, if you will, which that's a lucky pull. (laughs) <laughs> if you're looking for a first boss. Right. Uh, so he helped quite a bit. <laughs> and then you have guys like Phil Soren or yourself. And there's been people all through my career that I've kind of viewed as folks that I could take different pieces of their leadership styles or different pieces of what I saw through track and cross country at the time or in my baseball teams or even as you're watching professional sports. And I think that kind of all put together is what kept me interested in the role with an organization. Wow. How does a guy get lucky enough to have Brian Bell as your first manager? That that's a a pretty lucky pull indeed. I got to tell you. Yeah. Good good for you. But then you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do for an encore? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lucky for great. me, the encore was Brian again. So. Right, right. Yeah, because you was, uh, joined him over at Code 42. That was wonderful. Yep. Well, you mentioned a, a good number of leadership mentors that you've been fortunate enough to you know, be involved with over the course of your successful career. Can you think of anybody in particular who made a big investment in you or had a big impression upon you out of all the folks you've had access to? Yeah, there's been a few. Uh, Brian Mm -hmm. or Dennis Johnson, um, I would say, would be another one. Both of those guys have, you know, not only helped me out, but helped. I couldn't put a number on it. uh, Is through their careers, you know, the personal aspects of it, the professional aspects of it, and they've all grown to be good friends as well. So, you know, for me, I would say those two in particular. Uh, Obviously, we have a good relationship. (laughs) Phil Soren, I've stayed in touch with. Jeff Hink in town uh, mm-hmm. uh, with Rally Ventures, who invested in Compellent. You know, we, we stay in touch. So there's an ecosystem of folks that either worked with, for, or around for, you know, 15 or 20 years. Yeah. And, uh, but I would say, you know, from a, who made the investment back for myself personally the most, I would say probably Brian and Dennis. A couple of great guys and really terrific human beings in addition to great leaders, for sure. Absolutely. Nick, I would imagine our listeners would love to hear a little bit about what you do to raise the level of your leadership game. Anything that you're doing these days to take yourself to a new level? Well, yeah, obviously we're working with you, which is both a combination of elevating my game, but also ensuring that we elevate the collective games of our leadership teams as a whole. And I think there's some benefits that come, you know, outside of the direct interaction with your team in witnessing the team as a whole kind of operating on a common playing field with regard to to leadership and how they lead Mm -hmm. their teams. You know, so obviously that's one investment that we're making myself personally. I'm actually not like a a voracious reader, so I don't read a million different books, but I do read a few books over and over again. And I definitely uh, poke around on blogs and websites and various articles both on leadership, but also what it takes to win in general, what it takes to grow an organization and best ways in which to kind of rally the troops, if you will. There's not like something I could point to as the, as the one, you know, thing I do. There, there's okay. so much material and content right. coming at you these days that right. I, I kind of take bits and pieces of the various, <laughs> you know, things I read. Well, I appreciate that, Nick. If you don't mind, I'd love to just make an observation for our listeners, something that, you know, I've had the opportunity to work pretty closely with you now for the better part of the last decade and a half. One of the things that I've noticed that you do about as well as anybody's ever done is you leverage the people around you. You're a guy who talks regularly to everybody on the team. And, you know, you've done skip level meetings with people that report to the people that report to you. You've done a marvelous job of networking with the peers in the organization and the people that you work for. And you just do a terrific job of talking with everybody on the team to make sure everybody's engaged and everybody's sharing their best ideas with one another. I think that's a phenomenal leadership technique. And just wanted to congratulate you on that because you do it and you do it well. I appreciate it. 
any particular accomplishment in your life or your career that you feel really proud of? Let's see. I got three little kids. They're all maniacs, but proud of that. <laughs> Excellent. There was some stuff growing up through track and cross country that I still have pride in. Those were more athletic accomplishments. Those days have come and gone. Right. Trust me. And then, you know, professionally, honestly, what I get the most out of, regardless of leadership or just being a part of the team, is, is just seeing the folks on the team progress into different phases of both their professional careers, but also life, right? So I saw this at Compellent, which was my first leadership gig, and then uh, again at Code 42, and, and certainly now again at Arctic Wolf. But you have people that come into the organization at all different stages in their professional career. It just so happens that those stages of their professional career align with stages of their personal lives. Right. Um, so you get folks that come in as SDRs and they're on the dating scene and single. And then you see them all of a sudden they have kind of the same person at the president's clubs. And then next thing you know, they're married and buying a house and everything. And it kind of ties back to the success that they're having within the organization. Like the success that they're having, the investment that the company's making in them is allowing them to feel comfortable buying a house or, you know, moving into the next, you know, stages of their personal careers. Right. Uh, and for me, that's, that's what it's all about. You can look across a room of folks that you've been working with for four or five years, and you can tell that they've all made a huge impact on the company, but they've, they've also made huge impacts through their hard work on the outcome of their life or what their life will be for the next 10, 15 years. So for me, that's the fun part. Right. Yeah. That's the part that you look back and you say, wow, we we really built something cool here. Uh, but the result of that is both that the company is is going to be successful, but the individuals that help to build it are having profound success. So, you know, that is what gets me out of bed in the morning. Very gratifying work, to say the very least. Nick, I know you're a music guy. You enjoy music. Any particular band or artist that is one of your favorites? Oh, man. Well, it kind of depends on kind of depends on what uh, where I'm at, but I've always been like Bob Seger. I had nice. kind of a Talking Heads phase. Okay, uh, I like you know Tom Petty, Rolling Stones, uh, Bruce Springsteen at times. I've been kind of getting into a little country recently, so I, I don't have like a this is my go to band, okay. but I'm a little okay. bit more of a. I'm a little bit more of an oldies guy and or okay. maybe a little more twangy like new country, not the not the poppy stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I can remember a time many years ago where I got the pleasure of witnessing you doing a Billy Joel impression. And oh, uh, yeah. I got to tell you, you're you're pretty good. That was yeah. a very entertaining evening. Yeah, you can thank. I think it was my seventh grade history teacher. Believe it or not, yeah. I know it'll shock you, but I, I got a detention. And in the detention, <laughs> the requirement uh, was that we had to understand the lyrics of We Didn't Start the Fire, which if you don't, right. I, I know you've heard me sing it now, but I had to sit right. there and go through every single word or mm -hmm. person or thing and identify like why it was in the song. And then wow. I had to read the thing so many times that I me memorized it. So Sure. Sure. So, so lucky you, you get the outcome, which is me trying to sing it. Amen. It was, it was a pleasure. I, like you, I'm a big fan of Bob Seger. Lately, I don't know. I'm just having all sorts of fun listening to his whole catalog. You mentioned Tom Petty and the Stones. I think the Stones are my wife's favorite band. And uh, when I was younger, Bruce Springsteen was definitely a big part of my listening rotation. Yep. Some good stuff. I like your taste in music, my friend. I'm even a fan of the Talking Heads as well. Back in the day, I was a big fan of that kind of music. You mentioned that uh, you're not a real voracious reader of lots and lots of business books, but some good ones you read over and over again. Can you give us an example of one that you think is worth reading more than once? You know, so th this is going to be one that no one's ever heard of, and I'm not even sure if you can get it anymore. But one of the first guys, and I would actually put this guy in the list of mentors that I spent some good time with, you know, early in my leadership career was a guy by the name of Walter Brown. And he wrote a few books. He wrote one that is more about 
sales leadership or right. leadership in general. Mm-hmm. And then he wrote a second one, uh, which is really more focused on being a sales rep. And both of those, what's unique about his style of <clears throat> writing is that both of them were really set up to be quick reads. So, you know, right. every page has five, 10 words on it, but it's a topic or a theme within leadership or sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, pr- I probably read both those books at least once a quarter. And then, you know, outside of that, um, I, I read, there's a website called Saster, which is a little bit more for earlier stage businesses, but it gives you a lot of insight into how to grow an organization, specifically a SaaS organization. I've got good nuggets out of that. And then, you know, there, there's some other books that I've, that I've read, but they're a little bit more like history and, yeah, you know, so they're, they're not quite yeah. as interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. I remember back in the days when we used to see Walter Brown every so often in our compellent days, he was an interesting guy, very, very great sales trainer and sales leader, trainer of sales managers as well. And he kind of lived off the grid, wasn't it? Like way up in New Hampshire or Vermont somewhere. Yeah. Way on the top of a mountain Yeah, you know, with you know, solar energy when nobody had solar energy. And he was an interesting guy and he was a great person. Yeah. Nick, I know you've got an amazing amount of strong teamwork and collaboration at Arctic Wolf Networks. It's really extraordinary. How have you developed that on your teams over the years? I personally don't think this is rocket science. We've all worked together in different capacities over the years, but I, I think sometimes when folks come into our leadership team, they think that we all came out of the womb together or something, but sure. it's, it, it's more just because we've been in the trenches together for so long and that builds inherent trust. So the way in which we engage as a team is really built through years of, of engagement, understanding and experience in seeing that, you know, trust each other and that, that we have each other's back and that, you know, on the good days, we'll high five and on the bad days, we'll figure it out together. For me, that's just all about the people on the team. You right. know, so uh, you can have a team of 10 and if you add the 11th and they're the bad apple, you can send the initial 10 sideways in a hurry. Right. So, right. so we're, you know, we're very selective about who we bring into the leadership team. We like to make sure that we know them or we know somebody that knows them that we trust. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be at, you know, the current organization, but it drives a strong sense of ownership and a mm-hmm. strong sense of community and trust. And at the end of the day, if you're trusting each other, most of the rest of the stuff works itself out. Fantastic. Nick, I'm going to suggest that we take a little break here for a word from our sponsor, and we'll be back in just a bit. All right. What are you doing to develop the next generation of leaders for your company? If I told you that in 12 to 24 months, we could prepare your next generation of leaders for greatness, would you be intrigued? A majority of today's businesses promote from within to develop new managers and leaders to fuel their future growth. Here at Michael Beach Coaching and Consulting, we've built our Emerging Leaders Development Program so that it guarantees your success. Our coaching philosophy is to outfit each emerging leader so that they can proactively and confidently solve business problems and anticipate the future on their own. Call us today at 520-732-2266 to arrange for a no-cost, no-obligation discovery conversation with one of our master coaches. We're back from the break. We're with Nick Schneider, the Chief Revenue Officer of Arctic Wolf Networks. So, Nick, I'm curious. Do you have a 60-second leadership lesson you'd like to share with our listeners? If you hired somebody brand new and you wanted to give them a real quick lesson on leadership, what might you tell them? That one, I think, is fairly straightforward. For me, especially as we're building teams, and particularly the teams that I've been a part of have been relatively early stage or or mid-stage. I did a stint in a later stage company through an acquisition. Most of it is about team building. So as we bring new folks in, or if I was talking to a new leader, uh, first and foremost, I would remind them that this is about the team, not about them. 
And if they approach their teams in that manner, they're going to have a lot more success getting the team rallied around whatever mission they might be on. So that's, that's like at the core of everything. And then the second one is focus and to be focused in a material way, right? So like, it's really easy for everyone to, you know, write out their list of their 10 priorities. It's really hard to list two. And I've seen folks come into organizations or folks when they're struggling for a period of time or when they're struggling with an individual on their team or a challenge in their team. I've seen a common denominator in folks that get out of it versus not get out of it is the folks that get out of it focus on the one or two things that mm-hmm. will make the biggest impact, not the 10 that will move the needle slightly. And we emphasize this within our teams at Arctic Wolf, but we've emphasized it in other places. And if you think about it, it's also the way that really strong athletics teams or any team accomplishes a goal in a, in a timely fashion is not trying to do everything under the sun really well, but focusing on the individual task at hand that collectively will rise the tide for all ships within the organization. So I don't know, th- those would be my, my two quick ones. Excellent. Nick, how much value do you place on emotional intelligence when you're recruiting or when you're developing great leaders in your organization? high value. If it's not the number one thing I look for, it's it's in the top two. It drives a lot of what we've talked about today. If you can't understand where the person you're working with or the group of people that you're working with are coming from, and if you can't internalize how you should or shouldn't respond or should or shouldn't react to a situation or to a, a hard conversation or whatever it might be with a peer that's on your team, and understand their perspective, it's really hard to lead properly. It's at the top of our list of things that we look for. Understandable. Nick, my last question for you, you've made an extraordinary amount of investment over the years in investing in yourself, investing in everyone around you to build a very dynamic culture and a very dynamic leadership team. What's made you spend so much time and energy investing in others and investing in yourself? Mostly other people did it for me. So I had a great experience through my professional career. And that wasn't just because, you know, I worked hard on my own. I mean, I did work really hard on my own, but I wouldn't have had half the success that I've had or that the teams that I've been a part of had without people making investments in the individuals on the team. So for me, part of it is I grew up in my professional career surrounded by really good leaders or with examples of really strong leadership. For me, it's both about, wow, that really works, but also about repaying the favor to folks as we're bringing folks through their leadership path. It's for me kind of the the only way I know. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so it's, it's more about my personal experience and, and how well I think it worked, but also how much I enjoyed it and kind of recreating that for, for other folks. Well, you're doing it and you're doing it well, my friend. Thank you so much. This has been a fantastic experience interviewing you today and I really appreciate you. Well, listeners, that's our episode for today. We want to thank today's guest, Nick Schneider, the Chief Revenue Officer of Arctic Wolf Networks, the leader in security operations. Thank you, Nick. Our interview today provided keen insights for our listeners that they'll be able to implement as they become better leaders. We appreciate your contribution to our program, Nick, and to our listeners' ongoing success. Our next episode will be released soon. And once again, you can rest assured we're going to bring our A game and come to you with another fantastic guest. Thank you, listeners, for joining us. And please reach out to us at info at michaelbeachcoach.com if you have a terrific suggestion for a future episode guest. Or, hey, maybe you'd like to become a featured guest yourself. Either way, we'd love to hear from you. We'll look forward to our next episode and seeing you all again. Until then, remember, you've got to start working hard to become the person you've always wanted to become by investing in yourself. And then, more importantly, you've got to invest in your team. Believe in yourself and believe the best in everybody you work with, and things always work out well. See you next time, gang.